Lionel Nelson here, and welcome to A Father's Note, promoting fathers through building men. If we're going to be successful fathers, we're going to be fathers who are very, uh, who are walking in our role and in our, our, our purpose as men. There's no better place in order to understand that, that role is, other than we go to the Word of God. So in Genesis 3.26, and I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified Bible, it says that then God said, let us meaning the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness. So therefore, we were made in the image of God and to the likeness of God. And not, when he talks about likeness, we're not talking about just the physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness, okay? And it also says, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So when I saw this here, when I, in this scripture here, there are two things that, if you ask me, that absolutely settles it all. And that is to understand that man was given identity as well as we was given to have authority. Okay. And, and, and I think that's very important. Let's look at, uh, I have another scripture here as well. Proverbs 20 and verse 7. Now I love this one here. Because this is important as far as following father, being a father as well. And this is out of the Amplified Bible. It says that the righteous man who walks in integrity and lives life in accord with his godly beliefs has, has blessed, happy, and spiritually secure are his children. Happily and spiritually secure are his children after him who have his example to follow. So if you want to be a good father, if you want your children to have some, it is our responsibility to make sure that we are providing a good following for our children to follow. But let me give you the definition of, how, of fatherhood because I thought that this was rather interesting. So a father, a father is defined as, number one, the head of the household and one who leads his family, his wife, and, and his children to God. But also is uh, is defined as a man who who is who who have a child who begotten a child. Okay, so if you've had a child, if you impregnated a lady, a woman, preferably your wife, and she had gave birth, that means you are a father. Okay, and as a father, you're supposed to be of your household. Okay, we're talking about being a father. But it's interesting when I looked at the word fatherhood, I could not find a definition that was suitable to me. So what I did, I divided, I separated, shall I say, the two words. Okay, so I've given you the definition of what a father is. A person, a man who impregnates, who has a child through a woman. And also a father is a person who is the head of his house, who leads and guides his children, his wife and his children to God. But look what the word hood means. But, and, and this thing really blew my way. But a hood is considered to be a covering of the head and the neck. Of course, it has an opening. But it's interesting. Fatherhood. Father covering. It's, so what I got from that, fathers, is our responsibility to cover our families. To be in a place where we can protect, be a protector, to be a provider. To be in a place where it's that we can be essential to our children, to our families. And if our children have, they're going to go astray, absolutely. Especially when they get out there on their own, they're going to have their own mind, they're going to want to do their own thing. But just look at it, this, the same process. God, there was a, there's a biblical story in the Bible about the prodigal son. The prodigal son went and did all that he had to do in his way. But nevertheless, though, his father, his father covered his son even while he was in his moment of distress. How did he cover him? Well, through faith, through prayer, for just a couple of examples. But he never stopped loving his son. He never gave up on his son. And that's what you call considered to be a covering. So let me just wrap this up real quick. Let me just sum everything that I read to you very quickly here. Okay, so it's important that we understand we have already been given an identity. We do not need the world. We do not need the government or anyone, or no politician, to tell us who we are as men. I don't need 
anyone else to give me my identity because I understand that I was made and fashioned after the image of God and my spirit not supposed to have the likeness and the moral beliefs and the moral righteousness that he has. And then what is our purpose? Our purpose is, and, and listen, let me tell you something. Let me say this up. You are a father and it is okay if you're a father, even if it's unintentional, stand up to your hope, you know, hey, stand up to your responsibilities. Stand up to your, and I know many of you out there, you have had children, you know, by women who you did not love. It might've been a one night stand or whatever it is. Hey, listen, just don't, whatever you do, okay, if you don't wanna be with that lady, don't abandon your responsibility of the child. It is not the child's fault that they are here. And it's sad and it's a shame and it's ridiculous that we make the child feel like they're responsible for the fact that we don't want them or we as parents, we fight amongst ourselves over the child or even the child is being used as a, as, as a ping pong ball back and forth, back and forth. No, we can't do that. Stand up, bro. Stand up on your responsibility. You do not have to love that woman if you don't want to be with her. That's fine. But love on your child. No matter how much hell she raised, fight through it, bro. Fight for your child. Fight for the relationship with your child. Fight for it. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you to do anything that I did not have to do myself. Because I had to walk that road, bro. And it, yeah, it's not easy. Man, it will drive you absolutely crazy, but you can do it. You can do it and you can win.